I think I have a gambling addiction. You? Yeah. <laughs> like are you like gambling with money? Remember the GTA casino? Yeah, yeah. I lost all my money on that shit. <laughs> When did you play GTA recently again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it, man. I th- I think I am very sensitive to gambling addictions. Well, huh? Gambling in GTA Actually, casino. I'm not I'm not addicted to gambling. I'm addicted to winning. <laughs> <laughs> like the meme with the guy uh, mining and they say all gamblers no, 99% of gamblers stop before they hit the jackpot. Exactly, exactly. Have you hit the jackpot yet? No. Nah, the thing is like for me when I gamble on GTA it it gives me the same feeling as when you gamble IRL. But say. gambling on GTA is not the same as gambling IRL. If you gamble on IRL, you would know the difference. No, no, no. It gives me the same feeling. It's like comparing a cigarette with cocaine. <laughs> it's not the <laughs> same, bro. It is. It literally gives me the same feeling, though. How do you know? You haven't experienced the cocaine. I, I have gambled IRL. Okay. But not with real money. I went I, I went. I went to the casino once in yeah. uh, in Spain. I was on holiday and I went to the, uh, to the casino with a friend of mine. And... Uh, Yeah, we didn't gamble, but we just we were cu- really curious, like how she, w- how that looks inside the casino. We only seen it in the movies and stuff. And then we went into the casino, and it it was some depressing place, man. They give you free snacks? And I, I don't remember. I don't think they we we got s- something free. We just went in there. The guy controlled our ID, ch- the check on our IDs, to see if our uh, age was eighteen, uh, eighteen plus. Yeah, in Spain it's eighteen plus. Uh, so we went in there and then we just looked at people gambling and there was like this old guy sitting at this big table I don't remember what kind of game it was but he was just watching there and he kept like betting 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 yeah. and he, st- he was losing for l- half an hour it's, it's addiction but that's crazy though I don't get that I don't get that part for me it's like the the thrill is in winning doesn't okay. matter how much you win if you win a hundred if you win a thousand of course you're gonna be more happy if you win a thousand than a hundred yeah. but at the same time it gives the same dopamine rush that you want I think it is more about the tension when you're when you don't know the result yet no I don't care about that I think I for I believe for general guys. yeah it's possible yeah or maybe it's like a habit maybe it's like smoking for some people at, at some point because I remember my mom told me a story once that for King's Day back back in the day it was Queen's Day mm-hmm. in like 80 something uh, uh, 90 something she went to like this um, cafe And there was a slot machine in the corner. Yeah. My mom and her friends were having fun, and for just just for fun, they put like ten ten bucks in the machine and just spun it once to see what's gonna happen. Yeah. They didn't get anything out of it, but they just left it, you know, as normal people would do, you know, yeah. once and ah, uh, it's fun, whatever. Let's see if we're gonna be millionaires or not. Yeah. But the dude saw them, and he was like, "You guys made me so happy seeing you guys happy." He gave them like fifty bucks. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So strange. So I think it's like a the owner of picture. the slot. No, a random, random dude guy. playing the sl- slots. Ah, uh, maybe he he was so happy to see that they were not down bad as him. He was like, bro, yeah, I like, can't like stop. Cigarettes. But they can't stop, so I'm happy that they could move on. Exactly. Basically, yeah. Look how low he's sad, man. It is really sad. It's like addiction, yeah. literally. But if he was really addicted, he would have kept the 50 and gamble with it. <laughs> so I don't think he was really addicted. Yeah. 99% of the people stop right before they're about yeah. to win. Yeah. Maybe he won 50k and I was like, yeah, 50 is nothing. No, because he knows? kept on going. My mom said he kept on going for like uh, hours on end afterwards. Yeah. No, I think it's like an addiction, man. Yeah. On old cafes and restaurants, sometimes they still have like sl- slot machines and you see like, I have a snack bar near my house and then they also have a slot machine and then yeah, you just see some old, it's always old people just sitting there and then It looks so depressing, man. It doesn't even look like a fun game slot machine. No. If you was doing poker or something, I could get it. It's like skill based, yeah. at least. But you're just Or like sports betting. Sports betting is really I think really I would be really good in sports betting. I think it's harder than you think. Nah. It's I, really I, hard. I, I've done it a few times, like without because I can't do it in the Netherlands yeah. for what I'm trying to do. Because in the US you have like specific brands that I'm not gonna name un- yeah. until they sponsor me. That you can you sign up and you get like a hundred bucks yeah, yeah and you can just like do that shit and there the NBA is big and my knowledge of the NBA is like on an analyst level 
That's opinion. what I mean. So you need knowledge for sports betting. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm so like good at that shit that like I know which players are gonna be good and whatnot. Yeah, so you understand the game. Exactly. So with my expertise, I've looked at the sports bets and I've like in my mind was like, you know what, he's gonna be this, he's gonna be that. And mm-hmm. it's e- easy. You gotta you have to like bet is it gonna be over or under? Well, simple bets. Yeah, very simple bets. For example, will he get three shots in the first half? Exactly. Or something like is that. He gonna, yeah. Is he going to score over 18.5 points or under 18.5 yeah. points? Bets like that are uh, interesting. I think they're simple and I think that they could bring an extra joy for you exactly. as a gambler to the game. So and it's like literally skill based. Yeah. With a you know, variety of. Is it really gambling though if you can. Uh, Predict it? No. If you can influence your luck basically it's, it is luck at the end of the day but you can influence your luck by knowing more it's about gambling because it you never know gambling. what's going to happen because that they might not play that game that's true but if they don't play you will probably get your money back right I would hope so no you don't oh that's fucked because you gamble that he's going to score that match and if he didn't score that match you lost the money oh uh, okay that's okay. the gamble you gamble that he's going to be well that he's going to press okay. well that he's going to be in the match that he's going to have a good game because everyone has a bad game sometimes, you know? Yeah. So he has to have a good game. He has to have, she has to not be sick, be not injured, this and that. And, you know, if you are betting on a good player that's going to play good, you also have like a higher criteria. Yeah. He has to get a higher amount of scores and shit. Yeah. You know, so that type of stuff, you are, even though you can literally be like 100% sure that shit's going to happen, some, some he, he might just be like, ah, I bumped my toe. Right before the match. Yeah. I'm not going to play the match. Sports betting. What happened? Uh, something happened recently as well with... I saw the meme. It was like funny shit ever. It's like so many people betted on this one guy to play. Mm-hmm. And his teammate had like accolade coming up that he had to like uh, score a certain amount of points. And that match, he he just passed the ball to him. So he barely scored the, scored the ball. Ah, oh, he was helping his teammates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So everyone that betted him for like the the easiest, like the lowest amount to score, uh, he, he didn't even reach it. He was just passing the ball. Shout out to him, man. For we'll like care, for taking care of his friend. The funniest thing is people uh, people tweet at like the, the NBA players being like, yo, bro, I need to play my rent this month. Can you help me out? Yeah. And some of them are like, I got you, bro. And they actually like do the thing. Oh, okay. Be that's, like that. that's dope. But is that, is that cheating? Is that against the rules? I think it's against the rules if you are a player. I don't think you're allowed to gamble if you're a player. But what if what if you on your team then? I think you're allowed that, to gamble. But what on if other you? Because I know that because a couple of people have gotten banned, like Tonali. Yeah. Because he got banned because he's a gambling. Addict. No, but uh, Tonali, the gambling he was doing was really bad because he's gambling on him getting, for example, yellow cards. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. So then he would tackle. That's literally something you have in, in control. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. would tackle somebody. To get a yellow card. And when he got a yellow card, it was like, ah, oh, fuck, man. But he was getting money. That's so crazy. That, that one is horrible. But what Ivan Tony did, uh, who's also a football player in the Premier League, I don't think that's actually that bad. What Ivan Tony did was he was betting on himself to score, for example. Yeah. And you scoring in a football match is way harder, for example, I would say, than scoring in a, once in an NBA game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it so is, definitely. So he he just bet on himself scoring. He didn't bet on himself getting yellow cards or like getting the first throw or uh, something like that. He just bet on him w- scoring, and I don't think that is he got banned for it and he didn't even go to the World Cup, which was really sad for him. But I don't think that it's a horrible betting, and he also explained to himself that every uh, at the beginning of every season there's always a gamble addict at the club. It tells people, yeah, I'm a gamble addict. I did this, did this, I did, lost this. Don't be like me. He said they always bring those people, but they never tell you what you're allowed and what you're not allowed to do. Yeah. So it's just some guy's experience. Yeah. Because the clubs also know they got rich players. They pay him, I don't know how many uh, grants a, mo- a week, basically. So they know that they have a lot of money and they don't want them to go clubbing and go to casinos and all of that because that could inf- uh, influence their performance. Exactly. But he said, yeah, I got, I got that part, but they never told me, okay, but you are allowed to do these gamblings. You're not allowed to do these gamblings. And he was doing the gambling through an external person. I think it was his manager that was betting for him. 
because he said he didn't want his parents to know that he was betting because his yeah. parents are religious and stuff and he didn't want them to see it to see that and he only bet on himself scoring which I, in my opinion is m- s- some kind of like a s- belief in yourself i think it's like a confidence thing yeah. i don't think that's horrible maybe it even helped him perform better exactly exactly so i don't think that's uh, that's a horrible betting but yeah like tonali if you're betting on your team losing your team getting yellow you getting yellow cards and stuff like that i think that's horrible that is that is horrible at yeah. that point it's just just fucking over your whole team yeah. uh, that's really like bad are there any type of bettings that are allowed i think you're allowed to bet on other teams mm-hmm. as a athlete in uh, in football in this case i think that was all i think you're allowed to go to casinos of course and be- bet there gamble there but i don't think there's something else that's like specifically for yeah uh, forbidden for players mm. i think that's all no uh, yeah that uh, betting on yourself would be the best thing ever right yeah, yeah. for me I, I, i don't even count that as gambling but it's self belief in a way it also it does change because if you bet on yourself like in basketball if you bet on yourself uh, scoring less than 18 points at that point it is kind of yeah, but that's you're limiting yourself he didn't limit yeah. himself they said that it was at, at least one because if he said yeah, yeah. he's only going to score one yeah, he, he, he said might stop at one he said i'm going to score one and if he believed he was going to score three that goal he said yeah, that they he said they yeah, bet that i was scoring three i'm feeling it oh, okay. it's like a confidence thing i don't think that I don't, for me, that i don't point, count that at that point if you score three and you can go for more but you don't go for more because you're better at three that is kind of cheating though right yeah okay yeah, i don't know if he did that but that's that's the part that's yeah. like it gets a bit fishy right there yeah now there's it's it's very nuanced there's also this mlb player Shoei otani yeah the only guy i know from the mlb literally he's like baseball the, right yeah the baseball yeah. He's like the goat. Mm-hmm. Literally, he's the next supposed goat. And uh, how old is he? In his thirties? I think in twenty seven. He's young still. He's pretty young, if I'm right. Let me let me look it up. He just switched teams, and he signed. He's twenty nine, so he's pretty young still. He in signed the, prime. I think the biggest sports contract ever. Uh, might be. Let me look it up. It's ten years, seven hundred million dollars. That that sounds <laughs> like the biggest sports contract ever, right? Yeah. So he's gonna make two million each of the ten, next ten years. You're asking why, right? Yeah. So that he doesn't fuck over his team. What do you mean? So that he doesn't fuck over his team. If they only spend two million a year on him, his team can get a better player next to him. Ah. And after the end of the whole contract, they give him the money. The, they will give it in another 10 years. Okay, okay, okay. Each year is going to be 68 million. Oh, that's, okay, that's good. Because he's that good that they want to like sacrifice their own future because mm-hmm. they know he's going to bring like the current shit to the crazy. Yeah. So yeah, supposedly his interpreter yeah. is the one that stole money from his account. Interpreter as in translator. Yeah, I think. Oh, is, interpreter. He, is he Asian? Yeah, he's Asian. He's Japanese. Japan? Yeah, I thought so. Baseball is really big in Japan too. It is, it is. But his interpreter apparently stole money from his account. Yeah. And started gambling. Illegal gambling. Yeah. I don't know on who. I don't know how. But it should backfire them because they're like, hey, your account, gambling money, directly from his account. is like, it's my interpreter, this and that. I didn't do any of that shit. So yeah, now he's like in a pickle. And I thought he got banned for five years, but I think that's April's full prank because I don't see it anywhere still. How still uh, how does his interpreter have access to his bank? That's strange too. I do not know. Is his interpreter like a manager, friend, brother, sister? I don't know. Maybe related. It might be. It might be. Yeah. Oh, my battery is dead. I don't know. Be I right. guess we're not gonna find out. Yeah. Wait till next episode. Uh, yeah. Sports betting is very interesting. Do you know the origins of sports betting? Uh, no, I know the origin of betting. You know the origin of betting? Yeah. I'm going to get to the... Actually, you tell me first, and then I'm going to yeah. get to that. Uh, they actually, they don't really know exactly where it started, yeah. but they're like gambling on uh, on the fact that it started around six or 7,000 years ago. And uh, the reason gambling started was that people tried to enter the realm of gods. What so, do you mean? so people were 
we're trying to trying to yeah like have like godly powers and in this case it was like predict the future oh okay yeah so like oracle like, shit yeah so i kind of like that so people would uh for example have like sticks and they would make marks on them and then they would uh say i think actually i know it's going to be the this side of the stick basically they would throw it and if it got on that s- side of the st- stick it was like see i know the future basically so they're like i'm on uh, uh i'm in the realm of god basically i know i can do stuff uh, i can predict the future that's good, that's i'm godly <laughs> because back in the day there were a lot of prophets and prophets could predict the future and do stuff that people couldn't do so a lot of people were like okay let me see if i can enter that realm and some of them were lying so they had to come up with games like that and it they think that it started like that and people started to try to predict the future and it was like one guy was like yeah i can predict the future i'm going to throw this stick and i will say what uh, which si- what side it will land on and then the other person would say no you're lying bro you can't do that and he would say what if i can what will you give me if i can do it it's like how gambling started ah okay. it was like okay i can do this and then the other person would say no you can't and he would say okay what are you going to give me if i can do it it sounds like something that men would then, come up with yeah and then it evaluated like pokemon and then it became two people gambling basically it's like mm. not only i can predict the future but you, you have a chance you you can predict the future too so they were like both like i can predict the future and then they would play it and they were like okay ah. i think it will land on that side on that side if i lose i will give you this for papa and then it was like battling between each other for who is the real god basically yeah. it was like who is the person that actually can predict the future and then it evaluated a little bit and i think the asian the egyptians i think were the first to actually have like gambling games as a luxury i think they were the first to have games and uh, i think they also had like the stick game still with sticks and they would gamble it for fun as a party games and then later the, uh, the romans started with the dice and stuff and the chinese also did stuff with the dice as i believe then it uh, started went on from there but i don't know how sport betting started it's very primitive what you what you just explained to me is very human yeah that makes sense. Like it's it's like so primitive that like, I feel like little kids invented on their own without even trying to yeah, invent yeah. gambling. You know, because yeah. in a way you you want to be a, I think it, it it comes out as winning something at the end. There was like I think it's uh, human nature to want to win something. Ah oh shit! I forgot it, man. There was like this uh, saying for stuff like that. It's like if you, ah uh, fuck, man. I don't know how it went. It's something like if you give men something. You will always end up at X. The it just takes some time. There are some stuff that if you if you let p- people just be, they will somehow end there. And there's a gambling. Ex- one of them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because it it is a combination of multiple stuff. Yeah. One is surprise. Yeah. You know, you don't know what's gonna happen. The anticipation is there. Number two is winning. Because if you win, you feel better than the rest. You know, yeah. that's a competition. Everyone likes it. it's human nature to l- compete with each other as well. So competition, anticipation, and the fact I think that in a way anyone can do it. It's accessible, and it's also playful. Exactly, like you could you could have fun with your friends. You yeah. could do this and that, and it gives you a rush. I think a dopamine rush. Yeah. And and like if you're more into winning, like I, I like winning. So for me, it's it's a dopamine rush. If you're more into like gaining something from it. You know, that's also a rush. If you're more into, uh, I don't know, beating others, necessarily, you know, not winning itself, but just beating other people, that's also a rush. There's m- there's layers to it. But the way sports betting started was very similar to that. It was back in the day, the nobleman, I think in the US, I'm not sure, it might be in Europe as well. The nobleman had people that carried their, like, males and shit yeah so at some point they were like let's see who's mailman let's see who's car- uh, carriage guy is gonna get here the fastest 
So they start rebelling. They just randomly send out letters to each other and be like, let's see whose one is going to get there first. And that was the whole sports bet. Because yeah. they bet on who's going to be the fast walker. Yeah. And then from that, they made it into like a sport. Okay. It's like fast walking. Yeah. Like speed walking, pretty much. Yeah. And they bet it on who's the fastest yeah. speed walker. Yeah. That's it. That, that's how sport betting started. And from that point on, every single sport I I, I guess started having like different different bets. Yeah. But I think it, it, it's even older than that, because that's not the first sport that ever existed, right? It would make sense that people bet it before that. Bro, there were also the Olympic Games. Exactly. But I don't think they bet it on that because it's very prestigious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 actually, yeah. That wouldn't make really sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, but even true. then, like, with your friends, you could have bet on that. You could have been like, I think this one is going to be the winner. Yeah. And then the Asian uh, Roman, uh, the Romans were known for luxury stuff. And yeah. gambling is like luxury thing. Exactly. So they probably were gambling like, yeah, I think this guy will run the fastest or something like that. So. And they also gambled in the ancient Rome yeah. and also ancient Greece probably. Yeah. Well, gambling is really interesting. I, I don't think I really ever gambled. Maybe in games, but I think this all. I don't really, I don't really think I ever gambled IRL with money. And I don't think I will ever will because I, like you said, I also believe I'm really like vulnerable to to gambling. Yeah. I I don't think I I will be the meme of the guy never stopping. <laughs> I don't think I will ever stop. I think the the ah uh, the closest I've ever been to seeing somebody getting addicted. Was my friends playing CS:GO and opening like the CS:GO loot boxes? They were like mm-hmm. sites back in the day. I don't think they were uh, uh, still available, but they were like CS:GO case sites, and you could like put money on it. For example, ten or fifty dollars. Uh, then you can you could open cases and you do you would get skins, and you could like uh, gamble those skins against other people. For some, for in some type of way. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Like the it was like a fifty-fifty thing. I don't know. I exactly. Remember really. She and was, she was very rigged. Yeah. I remember back and in the day. And a friend of mine was playing, always playing that. And I remember once we were in a call, and he was up eight hundred dollars. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. And he went all in. He lost. He went sixteen hundred. Nah. Oh, we said, bro, stop, bro, stop. And th- we were like 17, maybe 16, 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of money. You've never seen that money in your life. He said, Bro, stop, bro, stop. He said, Nah, bro, I'm on a streak. Ah, uh, should I go all in? He said, No, no, don't go all in. And then he went 50%. I think he went in, he lost, and he d- had the other 50%. And he went again and he lost. That's crazy. I was like, Shit, man, I should have listened. I think that's, that's the biggest a- problem. Yeah. People don't stop. People don't know how to stop. No, I think the problem is why would you stop? So let's say you have a streak of six wins, and you're like on two uh, on five k. That's the problem. That's the no, problem. No, five k is a lot, but ten k is nah, it's just insane. That's the problem, bro. That's the problem with humans, bro. We just want more and more. Yeah, we greedy. can never be satisfied. Yeah, but we're that's greedy. the thing I saw. People are solving the system, beating the system. How? So on Instagram recently, there's been like a whole like trend going on that I've seen that people always say like, oh. For each follower, I will do this. Yeah. Or for each this and that, I will do that. Or some people straight up are like, yo, give me money. I want to buy this. And people give the money. People follow for that. So a specific part of Instagram is now making videos that say, for each follower, I will put 10 cents into blackjack. And some guys have like 35,000 followers and they put like, no, 350,000 followers and he puts 35,000 on blackjack every single day. But the key to this is no matter if he loses, if he wins, he only does it once and then leaves it for the day. Oh, that's, that's okay. And every single one of them has like $400,000 right now. Every single one of them. But how do they get the money? Do people donate? No, you start off with 100. Yeah, but imagine first day I lose my 100. Yeah, the second day you put it again. At some point, you gotta you gotta start with own money, <laughs> yeah, and then you beat. But that's the thing: a lot of them, the first two to three days they win, yeah. So they're up a certain amount, and then afterwards, if they lose a little bit, it's fine. If they win a little bit, it's fine. They just keep on going once a day. Interesting, man. I don't know how that really solves the problem. The problem is that you don't know when to stop. A lot of people lose once, and they're like, "Ah, shit." 
I lost my money. I gotta win it back. I gotta, I gotta and now you get desperate. You. Let's say the guy has 30k followers and yeah. he gambles 30k, yeah. right? Yeah. He loses. Yeah. Next day he has 31k. Yeah. Where is he getting the 31k from? Not because he didn't get 30k in one day. He got 30k in like 60 days. Yeah. So up until the 30k, he already did 100, 1000, no, 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 I get, no, no, you're not listening to me. Yeah. I'm saying, let's say the, the 100, he has 30, 30k yeah. and he... He uh, gambles it and he loses all. And then the they, day, after? day after he has 31K. But he already made like 400,000. How do we know? How? Because he literally has it like every single day. He, he literally puts in the house how much he made. No, no, I get that part. But imagine if he had, if he starts to lose at the big numbers. Yeah. Then you're fucked. Let's say he loses he's, at he's 30K, 31, 32, 33. He doesn't 30, have the money 30. anymore. If he loses 10 times in a row... By the way, so t- like statistically, that's not possible. Yeah. But he literally has a handbook. He's yeah. like, at 15, you stand. Because you have to like stand and hit and this oh, and that. Okay. So he looks at the card that he has. He has this. He's like, usually I will hit on this. And usually I will not hit on this. But the book says I have to do it. So he does it. And it works for him. Oh he, oh, he has cheat code. He literally has a cheat code. Okay, okay. At this one point, he literally had, had one that was like 8 and a 10. Yeah. No, no, no. The other guy had a 10 and a 5. And the blackjack is you have to go to 21. Yeah. And he had a 16. At 16, you have to stand. Yeah. Because you need everything above a 5, out we'll the game. fuck you up. Yeah. yeah. But he said, the chance that it's going to be a 10 is low. I don't know how. He's like, he looked at the cards. He's like, the, the chance that the next one is going to be a 10 is low. I think I'm going to get a low, low number first. He did it. He got a 5. Very, very lucky. He got yeah. 21. He got a blackjack. He won. And the next one was 10. No, because if you both get twenty one, yeah. you tie. You, you don't. You don't win. Nobody wins. No, you can just get your money back. Okay. Yeah, at least you get your money back. Yeah. But if you, if the dealer has above twenty one, or at seventeen, he needs to stop, and everything above seventeen, he needs to stop. That's a rule as well. Yeah. So as long as he does doesn't have seventeen or less, you're fine as well. So he was like, he has fifteen. I have sixteen. The next number is gonna be five because they know they're gonna fuck me over. Yeah. So he did a five, got a ten. He won the game. Okay, that's interesting. And I watched like four videos of him and every single time he talks about the book, the rule book says me, tells me that I have to do this. <laughs> we need that doesn't. book too, man. We need that book. It's crazy, man. But yeah. I but yeah, he's influencing his luck with the book. His, yeah. yeah. Supposedly, his chances. Yeah. It's, uh, it's at the end of this, all maths. Yeah. Maths. Math. Not, not, not math. exactly. A math. Math. But yeah, it'd be like that, man. I think... I think that's the key, though, that you don't want to continue because you lost. Yeah. Because a lot of people get desperate and they yeah. keep on losing. I think it's more of a problem that occurs after tasting victory. I don't think yeah. it's per se losing the money, but it's, let's say, if first day, like with like the crypto thing was also a gamble for a lot of people. In the beginning, you make a lot of money. Then you're like in this loop of, bro, I made that money. I know it's possible. And there, there's the reason you will keep going on. No, I don't think so. Because look at the, what your friend did. He had 1,600. Mm-hmm. He lost half. Mm-hmm. At that point, he could have been just like, I got I got 800. Yeah. But he didn't see that. He said, I lost half of what I had. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. It's different. Because what you're saying is, you already got it. You already got the money. And I could get more. But what I'm saying is... No, no, I'm saying you, you tasted that you could get more. Yeah, no, so no, no, he also tasted that he... No, no, because it's not, it's not tasting it. What is it then? He, he lost it. He wants it back. That's different. Yeah, no, no. But the reason he wants it back is because he knows he, no, 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 he was there. He knows, he knows the taste. He knows, no, ah, no, I can no, get no, this. No, no, but the difference is... That's what I mean. If he, if he stopped at 1600, mm-hmm. he wouldn't go all in again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if he stopped at 1600, the next day he went back on it, he wouldn't go 1600 all in. He yeah. would go, let me do 200 today. Yeah. You know, let me get l- more like that. Yeah. But what happened to him, he, he lost what he had. So at that point, it's not, I'm here, I'm trying to get here. At that point, it's, I went down here. No, but you're I'm a th- loser. You're talking about the second step. The first step was, I'm here, I'm trying to get there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's what I mean. So how it starts. It always starts with you're yeah, there. Yeah, of course, of course. So you keep on going like that yeah, too. Yeah. But the second way you keep on going is if you when the, I think it's even worse when you go down one. Mm, okay. Because at that point, not only can you get more, but you lost what you had. So yeah. at that point, you feel like you don't, you haven't accomplished anything 
up until you get back to the point where you already were. Yeah. It's like it's like double, you know? Not only are you able to get something, you lost something. Yeah. Even though in the beginning of the night you didn't even have it. Yeah. I think it's human that we feel like we lost something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even though you didn't have it, you literally did not have the money in the start of the evening, but out of nowhere you had it. Like you had it for a second, let's say, and now you feel like you lost money. Yeah, that makes you feel worse. Yeah, yeah. you want to feel better. I was one, one way to feel better. Keep gambling. Keep man. gambling. Yeah, exactly. So this is why I'm gambling. <laughs> yeah, nah, gambling is uh, fun, man. I could I could see like the thrill and fun sides of it, but yeah, uh, I don't think I will ever start the gambling because I know I will be sensitive to it. I'm I'm sensitive to addiction. That's why I, that's why I don't do a lot of stuff because I know the moment I start, for example, a lot of people say, you know, I just want to try something once. You know, I want to try cocaine once. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try wheat, uh, uh, wheat sounds marijuana. I want to try smoking once. I want to try this once, drinking, blah blah blah. I know I won't stop at once. I used to be like don't. that, but then I did pepper spray once. No, but pe- pepper spray is not. not it's not fun. It was really not if, fun. If you if you like smoke weed and you get a little high, that's fun. So I think that's I more addictive because it is fun. I don't think stuff that are not uh, not fun are addictive. I think you're addicted to the dopamine rush and I don't know all the chemical shit happening in your brains that are positive in this I case. I get that, but I I, I kind of disagree. For, are there w- for myself, example? I, d- I mean, like when I look, at, I don't disagree with that. That is that case. For me, I don't think that's the case for me. I think the the effect that it has on me is not because of the chemicals that's in it. Mm-hmm. I think the effect that it has on me is because I attach it to something else that I do um, like. Explain. Like, let's say, let's say gambling. Mm-hmm. Inherently, I don't like gambling. Like, the, I mean, like, there's nothing that I would like about gambling. Yeah. But what I do like, I like winning. That's one thing. And I get the same, let's say I win a battle royale, like Fortnite. Yeah. I get the same feeling as when I win, gam- uh, win gambling. But why? It's winning. You're addicted to winning. Exactly. <laughs> but let's say, let's say, hmm, what else? Iced tea. Yeah. Let's say I drank iced tea every single day. I could stop like this. I've done that before. Yeah. But it's always something else that keeps me there. It's not the thing itself. But you're not addicted to iced tea. You just like iced tea. There's a difference between being addicted and liking stuff. Yeah, I get that. But at that point... Uh, Addiction, for example, coffee. People get addicted to coffee because there's like caffeine, caffeine in it. But coffee is a whole that's different that's story. That's, that does like literally stuff with your brain. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't really do much stuff with your brain, I believe. Maybe it releases some hormone that that that's like, uh, that you it's release energy. when you're happy. No, no, that's chocolate. Okay, maybe it gives you energy. Okay, literally, it's no, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about iced tea. Maybe iced tea does that for you. Yeah, it's sugar. Yeah, sugar does that, right? So yeah, so I think the only thing I'm addicted to is sugar. To be honest, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't think there is something I'm really addicted to. If I'm being honest, that's the only thing. Yeah, and yeah. winning. I'm. A, I'm. A, that, that, that's that's my biggest flaw. My addiction to winning, honestly, because yeah. I can. I I realize I can't take something not serious. Yeah, because yeah. I want to win. Yeah. Literally, you, you know, me playing the the stupidest game, bro. If I play with my little cousins, bro, I, I do not care yeah. who I'm playing against, bro. As long you're really, as I'm you're really a win. toxic gamer. Yeah, because I want to win. You get really mad and stuff. Yeah, because I, I, that's the only thing I care about, bro. No, I, I also care about winning in games and stuff, but if I lose, it doesn't, like, end my life. It depends on how I lose, though. Yeah. I don't mind losing in a good way. Okay. Let's say I'm playing at my best. My team is playing at their best that I've seen them play at. And we lose, it's whatever, bro. I've had times where I play with someone and I've literally gotten outplayed. At that point, I'm like, ah, it's just better. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can't do it. At that point, you can't even do nothing about it. Yeah. Like today, I was playing some drafts on FIFA. I got back into FIFA a little bit. I was playing it, bro, and I, I beat a couple of people and the dude was smoking me. Yeah. He was he was a really fucking good player. And at that point, he had better players than me too because, yeah. you know, he just had a better draft. And I was like, ah, Right. Uh, I'd be like that, bro. Yeah. But it's also because you really don't care about that game. No, I do. Because if I if I play it and something... For me, it, I hate unfairness. If I win and it's unfair, I will not feel good about it either. Okay. I want to win like when someone is at their full capability. No, I feel good when I win uh, with, and it's unfair. 
but the person I was playing against was better than me. Then it feels really <laughs> good. It's like ah, I don't feel good there, bro. bro I, I just I'm like won. Goku. I, I will give you a sense of being first, and then yeah, I will play you yeah. again, and I get smoked yeah. <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, Go- Goku lost on purpose. Didn't he like yeah, against Cell? Did he? Yeah, yeah. No way. He left us for the next generation because he then wanted. He, came he, wa- back, bro. And, uh, he wasn't supposed to come back. That's why it kept continuing really? with Gohan. Ah. Yeah. And then they realized actually Goku is our main character. Yeah, we need yeah. him back. But well, that was also so abrupt, bro. I played the game, and in the game, he was like, "All right, guys, you know what? On second thought, just leave me here. I'm good. Yeah, See yeah. you guys." So yeah. it's like he, he disappeared well, for seven years, yeah. and then came back for a fucking championship tournament. Yeah, tournament. Yeah. Uh, and they had like two kids and everything. He, he didn't even yeah. see the second, the second yeah, the thing song. also with uh, the Majin uh, Buu saga, I he also could beat, uh, he was I able to beat Buu in the beginning, but he didn't. Because he, he also said in the anime, I don't know if he said in the game, he said, yeah, I want to leave it for the next generation. They need to be able to take care of themselves. Which was uh, really dope, but then Super Kim, they made, they made Goku stupid. Like he has no brains. But he was spitting bars in uh, in the sea. You see, Goku was spitting bars. He was a smart nigga. Why was he stupid in uh, Super? I don't know. Like, how was he stupid? In, uh, it's a, it's is the Broly really movie from Super? Uh, it is from the Super. Uh, for he was universe. really stupid in, in, in Broly. Yeah, yeah, they made him really su- stupid in the Super for some reason. Why though? I don't know. Is super, isn't Super like the current like the Dragon Ball? Uh, the Dragon Ball is in. Uh, it's hard to explain, but it's like in different multiverses. What is GT? GT is, I think, is like the... Future, right? With trunks. No, that's Kai, I believe. Or maybe Kai was the the main episodes only. I don't remember, bro. I think maybe GT was that. But uh, there are different multiverses, basically. And the multiverse of C is not the multiverse of Super. Ah, so there are completely different universes. Yeah, completely different universes, but the same things happened, of course. But what happens in in the future of Z? In the future of Z, I think uh, I don't remember the ending. I, the last time I watched Z, I was ten or twelve. I don't, I don't remember how it ended really. Isn't it the Margin Saga, the final of Z? No, because the after the Margin Saga, there's like the Oop Saga too. I really? Think, I think I don't remember if the Oop Saga was in Z though. I don't even remember how C ended. Just go to the last episode of Dragon Ball C. I don't uh, even know where to find that shit. Just how did Dragon Ball C end? Ball Z end. Kid Buu's defeat. Okay, it ended with Buu. Okay, it ended with Buu. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, and there's a tournament mini arc after a seven year time skip. Is that? And uh, the with Z Oop? ends with uh, Goku flying off with Oob. Okay, 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 then I was right with Oop. Then Oop is uh, the end. And when Goku is finding Oop, he's way older. I think he's already a grandpa then. Seven years afterwards. Yeah, yeah he's already a grandpa. Because uh, Gohan has a kid. Really? Yeah, yeah Gohan has a kid. I think ah. she's supposed to be in the game you were playing. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't finished the Boo Saga yeah. yet. So. It's, uh, Probably is. Yeah. He has a kid, and the kid will be stronger than uh, all the other Saiyans. Really? Except Goku, of course. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Is it stronger than Gohan? Uh, G- now Gohan is actually this now stronger than Goku Super Saiyan God. Right now? Yeah. yeah. How? With his uh, beast transformation. It's like with the lightning shit, right? Yeah. yeah. The, apparently that one is stronger than uh, Ultra Instinct. No way. Yeah, o- Of Super Saiyan God. I don't know. One of the two is stronger than them. Is it I think it's Ultra Instinct because Piccolo said, I don't think your dad can beat you. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But Gohan is the strongest now. But didn't, wasn't like the Ultra Instinct the final episode of Dragon Ball? No, that was C. Dragon Ball C, uh, I mean Super. Yeah. Super ended after the uh, Tournament Jiren of fight. Power. Yeah, t- uh, the Tournament of Power. And there was new season would come, if I'm correct. And uh, the movie is between that. Oh, there's a movie right now. No, there were two movies between that. The oh. Broly movie, which is also in the Super Universe. Yeah. And then the, it continued with the with the movie of Gohan Beast. That's the movie. And oh, that movie okay. also have like Broly in it. Yeah. Or a couple of frames. Apparently Piccolo uh is gonna leave the show. What do you mean how how is he gonna leave? He's going back to Namek? Uh, apparently uh Toriyama, he's the creator of Dragon Ball, right? Yeah. 
and like one of the final drawings of Toriyama, you saw Piccolo going like, oh. yeah, literally, that's it. He maybe he, maybe he'll become Kami. Who knows? And people are saying that it's very symbolic because Piccolo was his favorite character. Yeah, Piccolo was and his. That's the last thing he wrote. Piccolo leaving the rest. Yeah. So it was like him. Yeah, him, Piccolo. Him Piccolo was his favorite character. Maybe he knew. Yeah. Maybe he knew something we didn't. No, but that's the scary thing about old people. I don't know. I, he wasn't really that old, but old people know when they're about to die. Exactly. It's really scary. Because that's my right. sister works in a retirement house. And she says sometimes she's talking with the... Uh, she takes care of them. And she's like, sometimes I'm watching them. And they're like, yeah, I won't be here next week. And then they die. That's so creepy, bro. That is... That is that's fucking creepy, bro. That's such a thing for old people to do, bro. For yeah. no reason. Why are you gonna like, be so yeah, edgy, man? I'm gonna miss you and stuff. And they're like, what do you mean they're gonna miss you? <laughs> and then uh, they die, man. Is it this is literally it. So I'm curious, man, how that would feel, man. Is it the Piccolo waving to the rest, just flying off? Maybe he was saying goodbye because he was going back to Kami's place. Who knows? And then it says, We will be on hiatus from the next issue. Okay. So Next. Uh, next time in Drag Ball Z. Or super Adam, we Shout out to Dragon Ball, man. He also has like this the the cool covers. Have you seen those? The manga covers, covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah the special issued yeah. ones yeah, with yeah. like the other creators. Yeah, really, well, my favorite Dragon Ball uh, manga cover is the one with uh, the future and the older generation. And then you see like in uh, you see you see uh, Gohan at Bleef walking with his uh, family. And there's like this puddle of water, and in the puddle you see Goku walking with Gohan and uh, his it's wife. Fire. And it's like my favorite one. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't think it will hit the same anymore after uh, Toriyama's death. But I'm really hyped for the game that's coming up, the end of this year, the Budokai Tenkashi uh, remastering. And I hope they add a lot of stuff that was in the old uh, Budokai Tenkashi's. But I also would get if they wouldn't add them because games nowadays try to have as much as possible uh, competitive characters. Yeah. So they're trying to like have them on the same kind of level so that people will be able to play with all their favorite characters. But in the older games, that was not the case. It was That was really realistic. For example, uh, Mr. Satan couldn't fly. Yeah. So in the game, he literally couldn't fly. But if 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 I had Mr. Satan, you had me, for example Goku, and he was flying, I couldn't do shit because I literally couldn't fly. I just had to wait at the floor till you, you have came no down. rage attacks, right? And he didn't have key blasts. Exactly. He, so he no couldn't rage. do key blasts either. Does Mr. Satan have key blasts now? No, he doesn't. He never had. What does he have now? Though? Does he Nothing. have like, pistols? Uh, he had pistols in uh, the older game, uh, some older games, but I don't know in the new game it. Uh, didn't he have a jetpack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he could fly in one of the. Later games, but I don't think it was in the Budokai Tenkashi. In Xenoverse, yeah, in Xenoverse he had a backpack. I think they kind of fixed that with that too, because yeah, it, it was it was literally worthless. And f- for example, in Budokai Tenkaichi two, one of like Goku's moves was the instant transformation uh, Kamehameha that he did against uh, Cell in the Cell fight. He would load up Cell would shoot a Kamehameha back, and then he would instant transmission close to him, and then he would shoot him close range. Yeah. And in the old Budokai Tenkashi 2 game, you, uh, players would automatically counter that. They had like this t- thing, thing built in that play, uh, players could counter stuff. For example, if you did the solar flare, a lot of people would just st- start, start spamming random attacks in random dir- directions, which is logic. That's yeah. the same thing that I would do too if <laughs> I was blinded for a second. And one, uh, one of the st- uh, stuff that people would do automatically was if Goku was... Tr- was was uh loading up for Kamehameha, they would just blast key 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 throw key blast to disrupt him. Yeah. But Mr. Satan couldn't do that. So all he did was <laughs> <laughs> he was just waiting till till he got hit. No nah, fucking and, uh, the 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 blind the flashbang shit, what was it called again? The solar flare. The solar flare is so fucking you talked about how how stupid it was bro. Yeah. And I was playing Kakarot bro and Krill was on my team so I was like let me use solar flare and yeah. doesn't matter who it is bro Vegeta Supercell it doesn't matter who the fuck it is bro he just goes yeah <laughs> <laughs> solar flare in uh, the Dragon Ball C anime was really funny man in the, the, in, the fr- bro. in the Frieza saga he used it against Frieza that was hilarious <laughs> yeah, yeah that too bro the, yeah. The, that's so uh, stupid bro 
And then he got f- fucking demolished by Frieza. Yeah. Actually, Frieza, Frieza is probably my favorite uh, anime villain. That's Frieza actually, not online. Yeah, Frieza. Frieza oh, he got golden shit, right? No, after golden Frieza, there is like even uh, God, God of Destruction Frieza. I, have, I haven't even gotten to the gold uh, Frieza yet. I think like the after after the end of Super, uh, the tournament of power, all the universes fight, and what happens then? They all get erased. Till the final universe that stays in the tournament. I don't know yeah. if you know how the tournament worked. Yeah, yeah. So I, the I, universe I is fought, the and bit. if all the fighters from your universe died, your universe got erased fully. So they all got erased, and the last person standing and that won the tournament was Android 17 or 16, the boy. I don't remember. Really? What, 17 or Did yeah, 17. No, no, no. Goku was on his team. They were on the same universe. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it took Frieza and Goku uh, together to. T- to to get Jiren uh, out of the ring, because they couldn't beat him. But didn't he go Ultra Instinct and beat him? No, of course not. He didn't beat. They, he, they didn't beat Jiren. Jiren was too po- overpowered. The the way they beat him was, uh, the t- uh, there were four people over, Frieza, Jiren, Goku, and Android Seventeen. Yeah. They were all working together, trying to beat this guy, and he was too overpowered. They couldn't. And then the final attack. Frieza grabbed one arm of uh, Jiren, Goku br- g- grabbed the other, and they just went, tried to, uh, like, flight full power to out of the ring. Oh, because if you get out of the ring, you lose. Yeah. And then the, the, that's how they lost. Ah. And then, yeah, the f- f- uh, 17 was the last one over, and he was granted the Super Dragon Ball wish. That's why it's called Dragon Ball Super, because you have the Super Dragon Balls. Yeah. The the one Jack Ball is, is uh, bigger than planets. Really? Yeah, they are like <laughs> b- b- as big as planets. And then he wished for all the erased universes to be brought back. But there were not only twelve. There were twelve. Yeah, there were a, l- a lot of universes that got erased in the back, uh, back in, in the, the time, in, the past. in yeah. the past. And all the universes are kind of like the same, but they have like. A little bit changes and stuff. You have like twin universes and stuff. And in one of those universes, Frieza was the god of the destruction. So uh, is, is he evil? Yeah, he's evil. That's crazy. And he was like, yeah, I'm back. I erased Goku from my universe. I'm erased all the fucking Gokus. And then he hunts back the Goku of this uh, universe. Which uh, at that time, at this time, then he is like uh, one of the angels. Goku. It's like Wiz, yeah. Wiz trains the Goku to be like him or like to replace him or something but like isn't that. Isn't Wiz stronger than the God of Destruction? Uh, some of them, not all of them. Really? Yeah. Jiren was stronger than a lot, all the uh, God of Destructions. Who is Jiren, bro? Jiren was that good nigga, man. He was that guy, bro. He had a sad background story. Like his parents got killed and stuff. But uh, but what is he? Like, how he's is like, he that strong? He's a justice warrior. What the fuck is that? Because uh, his, uh, his parents got killed as a child and shit. Yeah. And he got trained by uh, uh, his master. Then his master got killed. He swore that he would protect the universe. Something st- strange, uh, st- strange like that. Yeah. So he trained to keep peace in the world. He's like a justice warrior from his universe. How the fuck is he that stronger than Goku? Because he's that guy, bro. What can I say, man? He's Jiren. But he's not even like a Saiyan or whatever. No, but the Saiyans are not the strongest. They're the strongest really? warriors. No, they're a strong warrior breed. Yeah, bro, the Saiyans got destroyed by Frieza, man. One, one guy army. Let's be honest. That doesn't make any sense either, bro. How the fuck did Goku fuck him up? But like, there's no, but no. Gonna fuck it up. Because why did Frieza kill the Saiyans? He was afraid of the legendary Super Saiyan. He was getting nightmares yeah, of yeah, this yeah. G- yellow-haired guy killing him. Oh, they couldn't go Super Saiyan, of course. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, couldn't yeah, get I Super Saiyan. Forgot about that. Bardock went Super Saiyan, I believe. In the in the in the movie, but I don't remember it well because I saw it when I was a child too. I think Bardock was the first. No, he wasn't the first because they already knew about the legend of Super <laughs> Saiyan. I think Bardock became a Super Saiyan before he died. And then, but he wasn't, but he, yeah, that was it. He became a Super Saiyan before, uh, in the, before he died. Actually, no, there are so many multiverses. All the stories are different. But the Bardock movie, Bardock is the father of Goku for the people yeah. that don't know. He became Super Saiyan. He fought Frieza or the death of Frieza, somebody he was fighting. And then he had like this vision of Goku. Uh, being a super saiyan and he was like yeah I'm gonna leave it for my son and then he died something stupid like that in the Bardock movie but in the new ah. generations Bardock realizes that Goku that uh, Frieza is trying to kill them 
And then he tries to warn the Saiyans. He goes back to the planet. And they all laugh at him. And they're like, bro, why the fuck would he kill us? Bardo got, got mad, uh, got, uh, became mad and stuff. And he's insane. And then Frieza blows them up. Oh, apparently he is the first Super Saiyan. No, but the, they already knew about the legendary Super nah, Saiyan. Because he was sent back in time. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So what happened is... Okay, so well, a sequel was made where it's shown that he was actually sent back in time to the past of his planet. There he met a cold demon. That's how fans call Frieza's species, whom he thinks is Frieza, but it is actually an ancestry of Frieza. Oh, that was it, yeah. Well, yeah he gets furious and became Super Saiyan. Yeah. Because Frieza destroyed his people, so he thought it's Frieza and he went crazy. And thus the legend is born and the Frieza family lived lives scared of the return of the ah, Super Saiyan. Okay. I want to point out that I don't know if it's still canon since it's a sequel of the first movie which yeah. seems to be replaced with the new movie where Goku's mother appears and shows a different take on Goku traveling to Earth. So it might not be canon anymore. Yeah, there are so many different stories but oh, of that. So. We really don't know. But yeah, I remember yeah. the movie he was fighting uh, something something that looked like Frieza and he, then he had like this vision of uh, Goku and he was like, yeah, I'm leave it. Then he okay. died. But yeah, it's a good movie, man. Talking about yeah. movies, you have a lot of movies to watch, man. Like what? <laughs> oh, of <laughs> course, yeah. <laughs> the the, the 1000 uh, movie special. Bro. You know what's the fun thing now? If you can like, when you're bored, we can just put one on. Yeah. Just randomly. Just take one. And for the people that are wondering what the fuck we're talking about, we... uh we bought one thousand, a thousand over a thousand, over a thousand VHS tapes, VHS tapes of movies. Yeah, and uh, it's you might wonder how big a, a thousand night. is. Oh, uh, one thousand is like from here to 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 here to this other camera. That's how th- it's so big that the camera switches angles. This is a lot. Yeah, so we got a thousand. Instead of like getting a Netflix subscription like a normal <laughs> person, we got we got, we a, got thousand a thousand movies. If, if movies, but yeah, it's uh, it's we got it more for like a decoration. Yeah, some of the movies are on Netflix. Yeah, Gladiator. Yeah, mo- a lot of them, and um, some aren't like Star Wars, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider was on Netflix. Oh, I don't remember. The mask, I love the mask. Yeah, the There's mask with the green mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's Jim one special uh, or something. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. one special VHS of Jurassic Park. It's like the first Jurassic Park. And if you look at it, and if you look at it from this angle, you see the dinosaur like coming out of the Oh that's sick. That's sick. I love the shit like that. Yeah. Just for that one it was worth it. Yeah. But yeah, it's um Yeah, why what did you get it? Because we we're going to renovate. Uh we're gonna change the setup. Actually, we change the setup, we j- I mean just move the setup <laughs> to a different room. And the green screen is not going to be green anymore. But they, they don't see that. On one episode they did. No, I, I, I did two episodes. One, because Halid was wearing a green shirt. And at that time, I couldn't get rid of the green screen without yeah. him making his uh, shirt transparent. And the same one with Ruben. Yeah, exactly. I can from d- now on, that one too. it's going to be blue. Yeah, it's going to be a or blue purple. screen. Or red. One of them. It's it's your guess, man. Leave Leave it in the comments. Yeah. Tell us, tell us which color it's gonna color be. You if you predict it, you get fifty dollars from us. Uh, from us, be. I mean him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll yeah. get you. I'll get you fifty dollar worth of VHS. Are tapes. we going to make a little video uh, how we renovate all the shit and upload it on this that. YouTube channel? I was thinking about that too. Yeah, yeah. You know we, that. we need to. I, I did a little research. The reason our channel doesn't pop up. It's because we only upload podcast. We don't upload a fucking video. Really? Yeah, that's why it doesn't oh, like pop up. Interesting. We should do that. Yeah. We should upload our first. Uh, we changed our name to Consistently Inconsistent. Yeah. If you look, if you search up Consistently Consistent, the first two things that come up are our podcast. And not the naked guy anymore. Let's yeah, go. The naked guy is still there, bro. He's still there. He's still there. But is he, is he higher than us? No, no, no. He's not higher than us. Let's go. Let's so, go, boys. Uh, the naked man is not But our channel us. is nowhere to be seen. One day, there if are you're no videos popping, bro, yeah. if you get the popping sponsorship money, I'm gonna I'm find him. I'm gonna fly. I'm gonna fly him out. But are we going to let him be here naked, or uh, <laughs> otherwise it's not the same? 
It's, it's gonna be funny. It's like saying I'm gonna fight this fat guy, but he's not fat no more. I get that. Yeah, that's really good. That's a really good point. Of course, I only make solid. Uh, it's up examples. to you, bro. You're the editor. Nah, I don't, don't want to be like moving in black, <laughs> black bars. <laughs> Every time his dick goes left or right, or. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, Japanese TV show, man. Yeah. No, that shit will be hilarious, actually. Yeah. Now we're gonna we're gonna switch. And is the end of Ramadan too? I think the next episode won't be Ramadan. It is. It is. It is. The next episode is the last one. Last it week will be Ramadan. the last Ramadan. Yeah, so literally. It is one or Saturday two days before. Is six. Sunday is seven. Monday is eight. Monday is eight. Tuesday is last day. Probably yeah. Yeah. So yeah. La- la- next week. What will it be? Are we gonna do like uh eat special? Yeah. No, we're going to do it for the eat special. Just eat. <laughs> no, the eat special. If the gaming room is done, we're gonna uh, record there. Ah, that's, that's actually sitting cool. On the eat special, that's, that's actually cool. That's actually yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And we still that's need that. to do the uh, mukbang we promised. We yeah, also that's promised. That's what I'm saying. Let's, we, let's promised, eat. we promised a cooking stream at 50 subscribers, and we are at 60. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. Ah, we should when, do was Aku- when Akuma was here, and he said he would be there too, so you better get really? your ass here. Really? Hey, yeah, I, yeah, can, I can't actually. Uh, to, uh, for a cooking uh, episode. Uh, we'll, we'll see about that. There, there's some medical stuff uh, going on with him. Ser- seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, I don't want to share too much information on the stream, but prayers up for him and his family. Yeah. Uh, he said everything is going well. It's a stable situation right now, yeah. so it's going good. But uh, he has to uh, be home, like for uh, for medical emergencies in case yeah. of medical emergencies. I hope. Uh, so yeah, um, all the prayers, man. He said uh, it's going good. It's going. It's it's on the uprise. But uh, yeah, I don't know if he's gonna be able to make it for the for the cooking special. But I'm saying for the. It's eat. not gonna be okay, uh, soon. Maybe in a month. Let's or so. let's make a mukbang podcast. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good for the eat special because yeah. it's like the last day we can finally eat. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. Any okay. any suggestions on what kitchen food? we should explore? That's a really good, bro. You know what I? You know what I? What just came up to my mind, bro? What? Like a specific cuisine you've talked to me about for like the past three years that that I should have went to, but I never did to this day. What? Afghan kitchen. Okay, I'm gonna eat fufu. Uh, that actually, we could do that too, bro. Or uh, jello fries. Have you ever had jello fries? I've never had jello fries. Jello fries is the best rice. I'm gonna have jello. But which one? Uh, bro, I all appreciate them. I don't. No, no, that's not, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to start a war here, bro. <laughs> Niger jello or uh, Ghanaian jello? I like Somali jello. <laughs> 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 now nah, I'm kidding, man. They're all good, man. You gotta choose one, bro. No, for me, what makes the jello complete is the the meat. The meat. If the meat is good, that completes the jello for me. Oh, which, uh, I don't <laughs> think you can really go. It's the same with fufu. You can't really go. Do like Nigerian meat it's more about or do you like Ghanaian meat more? I've never ate both of them. Uh, that's a good thing. That's the best answer. That you that's, <laughs> that's the best <laughs> lie I ever told. Man. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's crazy, bro. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, but you could nah. get some jello. You could get some fufu. I want to get like them, them goat stews that you got to eat your hands in the jello apparently yeah. apparently with the, with the fufu i mean apparently you don't sw- you don't chew fufu you know that right no real f- uh, good fufu is you have to prepare it well is you don't you don't need to chew on it you swallow it you swallow it exactly yeah i i, I told that to people and people call me white for no reason <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know that man because they don't eat fufu Bro, I'm talking about people from Ghana, is it? Yeah, yeah they, uh, a lot of people don't uh, but i also don't eat a lot of traditional somali food we eat fucking rice and fucking pasta, bro. Spaghetti. Because <laughs> the fucking Italians colonized us. It's a bit like that, bro. No, oh, we speak is, fucking Italian and shit. Everyone eats fucking Italian food, bro. No, but for us, it's... You guys have mante. I don't know. You have your own cuisine. Yeah, we eat yeah. fucking spaghetti, bro. That's true. That's true. Nah. But our rice is good. It. Our rice is fucking good. We I would say Somali rice is the best rice, man. I say what I said, bro. Somali rice is the best rice. <laughs> You know what? I, I I'm thinking we should we should get like a a wheel with like countries that we want to eat food from. Yeah. And spin it. And spin it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then I always wanted to have a wheel, but I didn't know what to put on me it. Too, so. Me too. Exactly. This is our time. Are we going to get a big wheel with a lot of options? We could get like a wheel? the little one, like the guy that says, "Spin the wheel." Do you know that yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, 
we can see. Gonna spend the way. We can see. We can see. That's a, that's. A really I don't want to do stuff like that outside too. Yeah, let people spin the wheel. Yeah, but for something. Have you seen the, like the ever spinning wheel? That was hilarious. The what? There's like this guy had a spin wheel, but it was automatic. It was charged with batteries, but you couldn't really see it. Oh and yeah, it kept spinning. Yeah, yeah. It kept spinning. And, the guy, and they were like talking with the guy for ten minutes. Faster, faster! Bro. I saw yeah, it too. You want to get slow down and then go fast again? <laughs> shit. And I was like, bro, uh, you give it a good uh, swing, man. And then they were talking to the guy for ten minutes and stuff. That was, was hilarious, hilarious too. I, I love I like harmful pranks like that, man. Harmless, fr- harmless. Yeah, the, <laughs> I said harmful. Bro. I'm not gonna lie. I also love harmful uh, pranks sometimes. I don't like them sometimes. Bro. I like our pranks. Like what? Our prank, our uh, our pranks. Our pranks are uh, our pranks are harmful, to be honest. They're very what? harmful, bro. They're funny, but they're. Bro, I love air videos. Yeah, cause cause they have, they have like this relationship. They know it's only jokes. No, it's no, no. I'm talking about like the air videos where the where they just do shit. For example, especially car videos, bro. They do so so many dumb shit with cars. It doesn't even make sense, bro. The, like one? the the one where the guy is like driving. And the fucking he just like pulls out the fucking <laughs> the, the, the key, yeah. And the car just like locks down. So you're going on the you're, he's <laughs> the, some cars. If you take out the key, yeah. the wheels lock. Yeah. So he's going really fast, and his friend just pulls the key. <laughs> so the car is like wheels <laughs> lock, and he like slides and crashes the car and shit, bro. <laughs> and they're like they're yeah, like just, you see the guys go like this and shit, and then and the you see the video of the guy playing tag with his beer. No? Yes, a pet bear. They also have like pet lions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know? I know that. He's playing tech. They're crazy, bro. He's They're playing tech with his pet bear. And he stacks the bear and he runs away. And the bear runs after him. And then he stacks him and the bear runs away. And then yeah, he runs yeah, after yeah. the I've bear. I've not seen this. Bro. That's hilarious, man. I said, yes, the, the two, the two wheels shit too? Yeah, the, 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 the two wheels, bro. It doesn't oh. make sense. How the fuck no, are you doing that no, shit? I, I don't know. That, that, that needs skill, bro. I don't think that's easy. I think that requires a lot of skill, bro, I think... I think the Arabs have surpassed a certain amount of money threshold where the only thing you can do in life is learn shit like that. I don't think it's per se money. I think it's just boredom. Yeah, but that, that happens when you have a lot of money. I saw another video, bro, this dude was on the Jeep and he was like zigzagging on the road and then he fucking flipped no, over on the I seat. I think it's because they're free. What do you mean it's free? Because they don't pay uh, Tax. taxes. Damn. That life would be different if yeah. you didn't pay taxes. They don't pay taxes. And... Uh, most of them, they they're fat. They when they're b- yeah, they're born into a family, of course. And a lot of them, the families already ha- have a family houses, and shit. Because culturally, for us in Somalia, it's kind of like the same. We have like family houses, yeah, a yeah. big house that all the family lives uh, lives in. You know, exactly. maybe like ten, twenty, maybe even more like bedrooms. And all the bedrooms are like huge, not like small bedrooms like here. So, you don't stress about rent. You don't stress about. Uh, marry you can you literally marry a girl you bring her home to your family house and then she lives there and stuff yeah. so, so like culturally there are like a lot of things that are so easy and I don't think they really have like the problems of a western society and that's also like the reason I believe that uh, the western countries are the, the most depressed countries because you're not a free human you're a product yeah. and uh, actually they I, don't, I disagree with you I think I think I think they're free. I, I think guess. for us they're depressing. What do you mean? For us specifically, because we came from the free. You know what I mean? No, like Western countries are the most depressed countries in the world. No, no, that's no, a fact. No, that's not a fact. Because Holland supposedly is the happiest country in the world. No, it's not. It literally is. The statistics. No way. I'm I'm serious. I'm literally serious, bro. Look it up, bro. Happiest bro. countries in the world. Countries. Number one, Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Luxembourg, Belgium, United States. Oh, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, the four lowest lifetime prevalence estimates 10% were the blah, blah, blah. With the exception of Sao Paulo, the highest rates were in four high income countries France, the Netherlands, New Zealand, and the US are in the top countries with depression. So they are. They but there are the how, can, how can they be the happiest and have the most depression? Exactly. Something is not adding up. Exactly. It's all the psyop, it's the matrix. You know what's the craziest thing? I looked at. It's the I government. Looked, yeah. <laughs> I looked at this, the, yeah. the stat for the. What was it again? For the best cities to live in in the, in the Europe. Yeah. And Holland had four out of the. 
cities. No. The best ones. Holland is and a good country to live in. Nah, bro. Because I looked at the, the criteria for why certain cities are the best, mm-hmm. like Rotterdam. And one of the uh, one of the criteria was that it's safe here. Mm-hmm. It's safer. It, it, one, one of them was safety. The other one was you earn uh, your your wage compared to the rent you have to pay is really good, apparently, in Rotterdam. So this must be kept. That's cap. Yeah. Rotterdam has the highest crime rate in the Netherlands. Yeah. It's cap. Yeah. So other cities have literally lower crime rates. Mm-hmm. So it, the, the, the the stats are so inflated because Dubai literally has less crime, has no taxes, <laughs> living is cheaper. Yeah. Everything is cheaper there. And it's a better country, to l- it's a better city to live in than the Netherlands and yeah. than Rotterdam in specific, you know, in, in so many aspects. Yeah. And of course, there's aspects where Rotterdam is better, but uh, look at them both, bro. Cheaper living, less less crime, less this and that. At the end of the day, it's a better country to live in. At the end of the day, is the end of the day. It is the end of the day. And with that one, I'm gonna end it because I'm oh bro. We, we need to do so so much, much stuff, bro. Man. I just got called too. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like. Share, subscribe. Actually, I'm tired of doing that shit. From the next episode on, there will be new. There's going to be an intro. We shook a hand on that one. And uh, yeah. Thanks for listening again, and uh, thanks for being consistently with us. I hope Love we'll you guys. See you guys next time. See you. Bye-bye.